everybody, welcome back to my channel. And as you can see, the little triangle ears, Fatty is joining us too. Today, I want to talk about something that has been in my craw since I was a teenager dating. And there's been a couple things that have happened in my life over the past six months that have really brought this stuff up to the surface. And that is my burning question is how do you know when you see a red flag behavior in somebody you're dating, how do you know if you should bring that up? And how do you bring that up? Because I have generally been the type of person to bring things up. I'm very expressive and it has not gone over well. And as I'm going through my journal um, dating stories, yeah. I just see the destruction, right? Like I, I'll own my part in it, but I'm just trying to understand my part in it because my honest intention when I'm communicating with somebody is to just clear the air. Because the thing is like when there's some something weird, um, for example, I went out for brunch with um, somebody close to me over Christmas time and they were 20 minutes late. They didn't give me a heads up that they were being late. They walked in and didn't apologize. And in that 20 minutes, I went from excited to see them to trying to just not be annoyed. So I find when you see these red flag behaviors, when you see things that, that bother you, um, they shift the energy of the relationship. And I found this in so many past relationships. I can't move forward with you. I can't have the good time with you because this is on my mind. And if you exhibit something that hurts my feelings or causes me to feel certain things or worries me, my imagination goes a little bit. I might ruminate on it. Um, even though I try not to, suppressing it isn't healthy either. So I honestly got to the point in my life where I just thought, hey, you know what? I'm not even equipped to have a relationship because if I'm quiet, I am not honoring my own standards and I just don't even want to be in the relationship anymore. But if I say something, it tends to be met with defensiveness, arguments, even like long emotional talks, which like, I don't want to have that either. I just want like, let's have a quick, nice conversation and clear it up. What did, what did you mean by that? Because it made me feel this way. Um, but that's never really been the outcome. The outcome has just been like destruction and I want to move forward in my life because this is, this has gotten ridiculous. So some of the kind of things I'm talking about is you meet somebody, you really like them and then there's something, you know, that is, is, is kind of weird on its own, not a big deal. Um, but it could signify certain things. So for example, these are things I've experienced. Canceling plans, um, not contacting you with, when they said they were going to or not contacting you like kind of with information when they said they were going to. Um, sorry, Fatty's like sitting on all my notes. Um, not showing interest when you're sharing something important to you. Not apologizing for being late, which I just said. Um, you share with them that you're having a bad day. They don't write back. They don't acknowledge it. Um, they don't verbally say anything. Um, seeing that they're on a dating app, whatever. All these things that like on their own actually might not mean anything. It might just mean that the person was depressed that day. It might mean that they were distracted that day. It might mean absolutely nothing. Um, will I see it once and fly off the handle? Absolutely not. But when you start to see a pattern or even there are things that have a certain weight, maybe they make some comments about, um, they don't, they're not really ready for a relationship or whatever. Something that's like, that's kind of a serious thing to say. I don't know if I want to pursue this further, but I don't want to just dismiss it and potentially lose something that could be an amazing relationship in my life. I want to bridge that. I want clarity. I want to know what you're thinking. I honestly do. I value and respect your reality and I want to see where you're coming from. And I also want you to know what I'm thinking. But I've never ever had a lot of success in this area. Um, 
And over the last couple of weeks, I've been talking to um, friends and family about this. And actually, you know what? My whole life I've been kind of puzzled over this. And I have gotten everything from know that, yeah, no, that's how relationships are supposed to be. Sometimes it can be a little bit tricky talking to your friends because they're not seeing the other point of view and they tend to side with you. But I am earnestly wanting to know how to solve solve this problem. I want actual constructive advice, um, not to dismiss my friends or anything. Their support's amazing. But there's certain things that, you know, I, I need like a professional to really give me insight on. It's also gone the other way, and I've had several people that are like, oh, no, you just can't discuss emotions with guys. Um, maybe when you're married, that's something you can talk about. But if you talk about those things, if you ever bring up something that's on your mind in the beginning of a relationship, you'll destroy it because men don't want to hear it. It doesn't sit well with me either. Working in customer service, I see people constantly, and there could be a little misunderstanding that we clear up on the spot. Does that mean I'm in love with them? Does that mean I care about them? Does that mean I'm committed to them? No. That means that we're both coming from a space of kindness and we want to clear something up. I see it all the time in customer service. Somebody will misunderstand my intentions or I'll misunderstand theirs. Um, I don't react most of the time. Usually it's a quick fix. It's quick clarity. Like, oh, I thought you... I'm sorry, I thought you meant you needed this. Oh, no, I actually need need that. Not a problem. Um, but when there's intimacy involved, these conversations can carry a charge with them and are more delicate. So I'm on the quest to learn about that. Another impetus in my life that has really made me want to explore this is... Some people have come into my life that are extremely reactive and they've been amazing mirrors for me to see my reactivity um, and how it feels to be around somebody reactive in my life right now who is quite reactive. And it's been very interesting because um, the conclusions they come to about behaviors and things that people are doing are so far from a reality that I could have even anticipated. Um, somebody will make a mistake at work and they'll be judged as lazy. Um, and it's something that could have just been really quickly explained as like, hey, we got really busy and I forgot about this. But it's interesting to see um, somebody else get like an angry frustrated reaction and it's caused me like I've been on the receiving end of this many many times and I know myself I'm responsible I have a strong work ethic my only intention at work is to do my best job because that is my personal integrity and that's my personal belief system and over the past couple years I've been working with different reactive people and it feels like judgment. It is very different to have somebody come to me and be like, hey, I noticed that this wasn't done. Can you tell me what happened? No problem. That's how things get cleared up. But there's a couple things that are going on. It causes anxiety. It causes me to like completely lose my motivation because I'm damned if I do, I'm damned if I don't. I almost feel like it's a guessing game of like, I don't know what's in your head. I have to kind of guess at it. I could take initiative and get in trouble. I could not take initiative and get in trouble. And it just makes me feel paralyzed. And it doesn't certainly make me want to please that person. It doesn't even make me feel comfortable to work in a way that I work. Um, so, yeah, I'm just going back. I'm thinking of, of different people along in my workspaces for years um, and not having that voice and feeling judged and criticized is not a place I want to be in. And it's kind of made me realize, shit, I think I do that to boyfriends. I overreact. Uh, my feelings are okay. Like I'm 
entitled to feel a certain way. They didn't call me back. Um, they ignored a message uh, that was very important to me, whatever. My feelings are valid on that, but I didn't need to react. So that's sort of what I'm learning um, is how it feels to be on the side of somebody reacting to you versus coming to you to honestly clarify. And yeah, I think I got some stuff I need to clean up for sure. Um, there's sort of two categories. The first category is that the red flags are so freaking bright red that I need to just walk away and like namaste it. Uh, there is, yeah, I, I have spent my entire life, um, kind of riddled with self-doubt and second guessing myself and not feeling like I can meet somebody's standards. Um, when it's just an incompatibility. For example, I went on a date. Uh, it was a second date and the guy mentioned how he made out with a girl the week before. That, I literally thought in my mind, oh, I guess I just have to be chill. And like, we're not committed. So I just have to be chill about this and let it roll. But it could, it didn't, it didn't roll. It was in my mind. And in that second, I put him in the category of somebody I would never commit to. I would never trust. And that was a situation that I should have just walked away from. It is not something that I can handle. You telling me you made out with somebody else. Um, I, I should have just been like, not a problem. That is totally cool. See you later. I'm going to find somebody who wants commitment and wants a real relationship. So there's that category where it's like, I needed to have more self-esteem and more confidence and um, not doubt myself so much, not doubt my judgment. My judgment sound, I should have just walked away. So there's that category. The second category is like, I don't communicate well enough. Um, I started, I think I brought up Matthew Hussey if you're single and have not watched Matthew Hussey, whether you're a guy, whether you're a girl, ah, oh, he, I, he is like a godsend. Um, this guy always has the best advice, and I have so much thanks for him being on this planet to helping set my mind straight. So he validates me in that he says it's okay to bring up those things, like. He's okay. It's okay to bring up the little things that cause that inner turmoil, no matter what stage you're allowed to do that. So I'm just going to throw all the garbage that I've heard for 40 years about, um, check that out about, uh, you can't bring up feelings to guys, um, that it's just going to start an argument, all of that. I'm just going to throw that in the complete garbage. This is about me and my life and my feelings and I can bring up these things at any time. The problem was the way I was bringing them up, 100%. Um, so I've been reading Matthew Hussey and I've also been reading this author, Gay Hendricks. And they both say, come at it from a place of kindness, come at it from a place of curiosity, come at it from an attractive space where you're owning your feelings um, and, and coming at it, like you want, you want to know the answers, like, hey, I've noticed that um, you haven't called me back a couple times when you said you were going to. Kind of doesn't make me feel great. Are you in the right? Oh, I'm bumbling this up right now. There'll be lots of practice. Sorry, Fatty's sitting on my notes. Let me see if I can get anything out of this. Um, I don't need to jump to conclusions. I'm going to summarize Matthew Hussey here. Be gracious about it. Be gracious about the way you bring things up. You don't want to make too much out of something, but you also don't want to be ignoring it. Um, you want to present yourself as an understanding person. Fantastic. Um, it is better to bring these things up rather than stew and ruminate about them. And you can bring them up in a caring way, not aggressive. This is you showing that you're not playing games. Um, I, I truly believe that you're honoring the person when you actually give them the benefit of the doubt and don't, don't jump to conclusions and want to clear things up. 
Um, I actually think it causes more drama not to say anything. And this is sort of where I feel a little bit of anger towards men is that um, when I brought things up, they're like, they consider that drama. And I'm like, what I consider drama is not being your authentic self and not bringing anything up and ignoring the elephant in the room. I consider that drama. Talking about it like an adult, I don't consider drama at all. So I am entitled to address these elephants. Um, sidebar, this dog came into the store the other day and had a, his toy elephant in his mouth. It was oh, so cute. Anyways, my problem where I need to work on is that I need to be coming from a place of strength and kindness and just say, and this is kind of Matthew Hussey's words, like, hey, maybe I'm wrong, but I'm just getting the feeling that whatever else you're going to say, um, that you're maybe not in the right space right now because I've just noticed like you say you're going to call and don't or what, like whatever it is. Um, it's valid. It's valid. Um, they can know what I'm thinking. I can know what they're thinking and it's all good. So, Oh, it just feels like a weight has been lifted off of me. I don't have to like shut myself down, hide my light under a bushel, whatever cliche I can throw at you. Oh, there's your little face. There's my little face. Oh, look at that. Anyways, sorry. Um, so Starting 2020, um, I feel very motivated to be more gracious and more kind. And I never want to make somebody feel the way that I felt over the years working with more reactive people. Um, oh, you also, sorry, my last point is I noticed too, when you're reactive, you give your power away. Um, you just, it's like this emotional diarrhea um it doesn't make people listen to you it doesn't make them respect you it just it kind of makes you a joke or it makes people scared of you but it certainly doesn't make them want to genuinely give to you so uh yeah i'm gonna i guess leave it on that note thank you guys so much for coming on this journey with me um kind of a late bloomer it's taken me a long time towards self-acceptance but i'm getting there and um yeah, let's all just be kind and open and curious and uh, clear stuff up and not jump to conclusions and all that gorgeous, gorgeous, lovely stuff. Um, make strong relationships. And do you want to say goodbye? Do you want to just say goodbye? Look at that toe. Look at that toe. Anyways, okay, this is just out of control right now. All right, have a great 2020. Sending so much love.